Over the last century, Germany has had an enormous impact on the world. Despite its influence, the nation has existed for less than 150 years. Today, German history is well known for its militaristic and dominating leaders such as Adolf Hitler and Wilhelm II. Before these rulers, there was the man that created Germany, Otto von Bismarck. Following a philosophy known as Realpolitik, Bismarck successfully defended the Prussian monarchy during a time when kingdoms across Europe were failing to remain relevant in a continent swept by reform and liberalization. At the same time, he embraced nationalism and allowed liberal reform to lead the kingdoms of Germany to unification. After unification, he successfully maintained stability in Germany and in Europe, while his own nation prospered under peace. Bismarck granted several yet limited democratic reforms to satisfy the people while maintaining the strength of the old regime. In spite of his success, his nation survived only 20 years after his death, as his complex government proved unable to survive without him. Otto von Bismarck utilized his leadership as well as his philosophy of Realpolitik to unify Germany, maintain peace in Europe, and to preserve the power of the monarchy. Germany and its monarchy prospered under his leadership, yet he was unable to create a sustainable nation, thus leading to a tainted legacy. Otto von Bismarck was born in the year 1815. At this time, 39 states ruled over the German people and were loosely united under the German Confederation, led by Austria. In 1848, revolution exploded across Europe and German nationalists hoped to unite the country under liberal principles, such as universal suffrage. The German rulers would not accept liberalism, and the rebels failed. However, the spirit of German nationalism which the rebels created lived on. There's obviously no Germany, but there is this feeling that there is a nationality that is German. Otto von Bismarck was born to Prussian nobles, who instilled into him a strong monarchist stance. He studied law at the University of Göttingen, where several of his early contemporaries took notice of his motivation to rule and have power over other people. In 1847, Bismarck began a career in the Prussian government. Here, Bismarck objected to all liberal thought. In 1851, he was sent as Prussia's envoy to the Diet of the German Confederation. Here, he became an advocate of a new philosophy, Realpolitik a form of realism adopted and later perfected by Bismarck that approached politics with a pragmatic foundation. In Realpolitik, the means of achieving power or control could sometimes be immoral, but it did not matter as long as it resulted in success. In 1862, King Wilhelm I made Bismarck Prime Minister of Prussia. A new parliament was dominated by liberals who refused to fund Wilhelm's military reforms. Due to the tension between parliament and the monarchy, Bismarck was brought in to resolve the issue. Going completely against Parliament and even the Prussian Constitution, Bismarck ignored the Liberals' demands and continued to fund the Prussian military. By giving Bismarck more power, Wilhelm inadvertently handed the reins of the Prussian government to the new Prime Minister. Bismarck would be deciding the future of Prussia. As a leader, Bismarck was initially against nationalism. However, under his philosophy of Realpolitik, he realized that nationalism could be used to bring future success as long as it served the monarchy. Hoping to expand Prussia's power, Bismarck orchestrated three wars, one against Denmark, another against Austria, and the last versus France. These wars not only strengthened Prussia, but resulted in the ultimate unification of Germany. In 1864, Denmark had attempted to annex Schleswig and Holstein, two states of the German Confederation. This caught the attention of Prussia and Austria, who attacked and defeated Denmark. After the war, the two German states came to an agreement where Prussia gained control of Schleswig while Austria ruled over Holstein. However, the Austrians were not wholly satisfied over the compromise, which gave Bismarck a reason to finally declare war on Austria. 1866, Bismarck defeated the Austrians in a short time of seven weeks. Following the war, the German Confederation came to an end, and Austria would be taken out of German affairs. With Austria gone, Prussia was now the sole major power in Central Europe. Bismarck's victory enabled him to annex various German states to form the North German Confederation. Bismarck still needed the Southern German states under his grasp and looked to France for a chance. His big opportunity came when the Spanish offered their throne to a relative of Wilhelm I. The French Emperor, Napoleon III, would not accept the idea of a German on the Spanish throne, and their foreign minister, Vincent Bendetti, got into a heated argument with Wilhelm. Bismarck recorded the conversation and altered it to make it seem as if Wilhelm had insulted the French ambassador. 
he released the edited version to the public in what is famously known as the Ems Telegram, which enraged the French people and led to France declaring war on the North German Confederation. Believing this declaration to be an attack on the German people, the states of southern Germany eagerly rallied with the North German Confederation to fight France. The United German Front defeated France, and on January 18, 1871, Bismarck used the massive nationalistic pride to officially unify Germany under Prussian rule. During his tenure of leadership, Bismarck manipulated the nationalists and other countries to further his own goal. While at times unethical, he successfully led Germany to unification. Prussia was victorious in all three wars, as his leadership led to an enormous expansion of land and power. With the leadership of Bismarck, what started as a region of loosely bound states was united with iron and blood. Satisfied with Germany's territorial gains, Bismarck believed that peace was more beneficial for the monarchy's future success. He created the League of Three Emperors with Austria, now known as Austria-Hungary, and Russia, two of Europe's most autocratic countries. Later, he forged the Triple Alliance with Austria-Hungary and Italy. By creating alliances with other autocratic nations, Bismarck hoped the monarchies of Europe could rally against radical revolutionaries. These strategic alliances also denied future coalitions for the new French Republic, which looked for revenge after its humiliating defeat. Bismarck's diplomacy was a success. No major wars were fought, no monarchies were overthrown, and France was isolated. Within his own nation, widespread change and industrialization led to the creation of democratic groups, including the National Liberals, the Catholic Centre Party, and the Social Democrats, which Bismarck believed posed a threat to the king. Bismarck attempted to suppress these groups by pitting them against each other in order to protect the monarchy's power. In 1871, he granted universal male suffrage under the belief that the new voters would support the monarchy over the National Liberals. However, it gave rise to the Catholic Centre Party, which also posed a threat. Thus, Bismarck joined the Liberals and started the Culture Conf, in an attempt to oppress and weaken the Catholics. Despite the oppression, support for the Centre Party grew, forcing Bismarck to end the Cultural War. He then allied with the Catholic Centre Party to defeat the Social Democrats through the ratification of several anti-socialist laws. Throughout his tenure of leadership, Bismarck constantly switched his loyalties to accomplish his goal of strengthening the state and the monarchy all in line with his philosophy of realpolitik. In 1888, Wilhelm I was succeeded by Wilhelm II, who unlike his predecessor, Bismarck, could not control. In 1890, the German emperor forced Bismarck to step down from his position as Chancellor of Germany. Bismarck preserved the monarchy in the face of liberalism and nationalism, yet he also embraced these new ideas to strengthen the monarchy and appease the people. His leadership was extremely manipulative, he denied his subjects true democracy, and he supported other oppressive monarchies. Despite this, many aspects of his leadership were positive for the people. He unified the majority of the German people under one flag, maintained peace in Europe, and turned Germany into Europe's preeminent power. However, following Bismarck's death, his legacy began to unravel. Bismarck's leadership strengthened the emperor's power, yet Wilhelm struggled to maintain it. The chancellor's diplomacy fell apart as relations with Italy grew cold and Russia allied with France. The Social Democrats made enormous gains and by 1912 were the biggest party in Parliament. The Nationalists pressured Wilhelm to expand Germany's dominance across all of Europe. To reignite support for their monarchy, Wilhelm entered World War I and led Germany to disaster. The German Empire was replaced by the democratic Weimar Republic. Even then, people wished to recapture the legacy of Bismarck. Some wished for the return of a powerful leader, such as Bismarck, who would restore Germany to glory. Adolf Hitler took this desire and marked himself as the powerful leader that Germany needed. He would lead Germany to the most destructive event in human history. Bismarck's early legacy of militarism inspired both Wilhelm and Hitler to fight unnecessary and ruinous wars. And Bismarck then sort of was a part and parcel of creating this mood of nationalism and this mood of, sort of militarism and then um, led to you know, World War I. By the end of World War II, what remained of Bismarck's Germany had vanished. Today's Germany is still a united economic powerhouse, yet it is a liberal republic, completely unlike what Bismarck envisioned. During his tenure as Chancellor, Bismarck was able to lead Germany to success in both war and peace. Bismarck was both cunning and manipulative. He united the divided German states into a powerful nation. Despite all of his efforts to preserve the monarchy, it wasn't able to succeed after his death. In the words of Max Weber, he left a nation totally without political education, totally bereft of political will, accustomed to expect that the great man at the top would provide their politics for them. 
His hatred for democracy planted the seeds of future German disaster as it placed the power in the hands of Wilhelm and Hitler. Both would bring tragedy to Germany, causing Bismarck's legacy to be forever tarnished. Thank you.